Hang like a tree, crawl like a bug, pick up a crowd and squish your hands in the mud, climb a mountain, hike in the woods, get scientific, it's all good. Well, hello there, wild bears. It's me, the Green Darner, and I'm just checking in on you to see what you've been up to. It's just crazy. We haven't seen you in a while. We've been all at home, hanging out with our families, and I just want to know what you have been up to. And then I thought we could do something together because that would be fun, don't you think? <laughs> so uh, I have been doing a little bit of walking in the woods, and just yesterday, I was walking on the trail and I saw these two young chicory gray squirrels having the time of their lives. They were chasing each other in the woods, climbing the trees, jumping from tree to tree, and I thought, man, if they could giggle, I think they would. <laughs> and boy, were they cute. And I just saw so much out there and I thought, I wonder if the wild bears have a nature share. Do you have a nature share? Do you? Do you want to share? Do you have things that you've been noticing out in nature? Because it is a busy, busy time out there. Well, let's just give that some thought. And so I thought today maybe we could have an adventure of our own, you know? I'm going to read a little story, and then we'll head out to the woods with our tools, and then we can see what we could see on our own. All right? So... I'm going to go get my book, and I'll be right back. All right, we're going to read The Little Creek by Jennifer Ward and illustrated by Julie Scott. There once lived a creek as old as the hills. It flowed slow and unhurried for thousands of years. And in the beginning, the creek was not much more than a trickle of water. A small spring fed from the ground and skies. It wound and curved its way along below cottonwoods and willows. And over time, the creek grew, carving out a space for itself on earth. During the seasons of the spring, mountains gently fed the creek. When snows melted and trickled from their tops, clouds fed the creek during the summers. When rain seeped from the skies above, soaking the ground below. Winds blew seeds to the creek, which took root and sprouted, green and new. And soon the creek became home to cattails, rushes, and grasses. They, over time, became home to frogs, turtles, and fish. Others found this riparian area in time, too. Snakes, herons, flycatchers, and ducks. Nights passed, and the creek watched the moon shrink from a bright round ball to a skinny white sliver, and then swell to a bright round ball again. It was under the moon's silver blue light that Beaver found the creek. Creek, asked Beaver, may I make my home here? And the creek welcomed Beaver, who fashioned glassy pools, quiet and deep. Migrating birds found the creek. From high above, they spied the creek as a shimmering ribbon below. Travel weary, the birds took sanctuary at the creek. Creek welcomed them. Time passed quickly for the little creek. Snows melted, sun shone, and clouds burst. Life in the riparian area flourished. Trees grew strong and tall along the creek's banks, shadowing waters and keeping them cool. And the creek's waters flowed around rocks and riffled over shallows and fallen branches. And the creek's waters slowed and pooled deeply where beavers settled. This was good for the creek. And one warm evening, as the raindrops splattered creek's quiet pools, raccoon came to the creek, and skunk, skunk followed not long after. Later, 
as dropping cottonwood leaves drifted and twirled on the creek's surface. Fox found the creek. Bear discovered the creek as frost clung to dark logs near the creek's banks. Coyote and deer snuck visits to the creek in early mornings between moonset and sunrise. One day, as the sun burnished creek's surface, people found the creek. They were traveling and thirsty. Seeing all that the creek had to offer, they asked, Creek, may we make our home here? And the creek welcomed the people and gave all of its offerings freely. Game nearby fed the people. Water from the creek nourished their crops. They used mud from the creek's banks to fashion bowls of many shapes and sizes. Over time, more people found the creek. People from different places who traveled many seasons and miles. At first, they would just visit trading goods with the creek settlers. Eventually, the visitors settled near the creek also. They cleared the trees to build homes, trading posts, stores, and roads. The land around the creek changed, and the creek continued to give freely to all who made their home there. In time, people channeled the creek's currents to better water their crops. They dammed the creek's waters to better serve themselves. They cut more trees to make land for their cattle. The creek wondered, without trees for shelter, how can beaver build? Where will flycatcher nest? Beaver and flycatcher had no choice but to abandon the creek. Gone were the creek's pools and glassy and deep, Gone were gentle riffles over shallows and roots. Gone, too, were raccoon, bear, and deer, snakes, herons, and ducks. Summers brought clouds heavy with rain, but the earth could not accept the rains. Structures and pathways now covered the earth. Trees and grasses that once collected and drank the rains were gone. The water had nowhere to go, nothing to soak into. It gushed wildly to the creek. Creek accepted the water. It rushed in the creek, murky and wild, causing the creek's banks to crumble. With each passing rain, water meant to nourish the ground went to the creek instead, and creek's waters now ran muddy and dark. One day, a group of children found the creek. Creek, they said, we're on a nature hunt. Do you know where we can find animals? But the creek did not welcome the children. Animals no longer made their home at the creek. Creek, the children said, we're hot. Can we splash your water on our feet and faces? But the creek did not welcome the children. Their creek's water was dirty. Children, said the adult in the group, this creek needs us. With our help, this creek could welcome your splashing. It could be home to many animals. The people, children, and adults alike worked to restore the creek. Banks were rebuilt, seeds and trees were replanted, litter was removed, water was restored. The people created signs and gentle paths for the creek so others could enjoy the creek without hurting it. The people vowed to protect the creek. Springs turned to summers and summers to falls. Creek once again shone beautifully. Currents riffled over shallows and fallen branches. Leaves twirled and swam on creek's surface. Days passed 
and the creek watched each evening as the sun crept downward, dissolving into night. It was under dusk's fading gray that a beaver found the creek. Creek, asked the beaver, may I make my home here? And Creek welcomed the beaver, who fashioned pools glassy and deep. And Creek was happy. Oh, this story reminds me so much of Mud Lake, which is our backyard. And so we're going to go out there. But you know, there was a lot of life at Mud Lake. And then people threw their trash there just like in that story. And guess what the community did? The community went out and cleaned up Mud Lake. And look at how beautiful it is now. So let's go, let's go out there, we'll make some tools, and then we will go see what we can see out at Mud Lake. Let's go. Okay, so we do need to make some tools or have some tools for our little excursion in the woods. Thought it'd be fun if we wanted to create a pair of binoculars because, you know, we probably have a bunch of toilet paper rolls laying around. This is my guess. And so we just take two toilet paper rolls and then you can take a piece of tape and just wrap it around there. Like that is very simple. Probably everybody in your family could use a pair of these. Because these are really great for just um, getting it a focus. You can focus in on whatever it is you're wanting to look at out there in the woods. And I think these are very useful tools for that. And so then you can poke a hole in the side there and tie on a string of sorts. So I'm just tying these on. Now, very simple and fun and you can get an adult if you need to to help you with this and then um, we're gonna go out to the woods I also have my my journal that I'm bringing along because I think it's really a great idea to just kind of note what it is that we're seeing out there um, and so we can remember when certain animals came back for the springtime and uh, soon we'll be having our broad-tailed hummingbirds returning. We won't see any of them today, but we might see the mountain bluebirds. You never know, they just returned. And then this is our journal, so I'm gonna bring this along. And you know, you could just use any pad of paper for that. It really won't take much. So you ready to go? Should we get out there? Let's go. All right, wild bears. So it's Green Darner again, and now we're out in the woods. We are in our backyard. And you know, we're lucky in Netherland, Colorado because this piece of property, like the story, um, was filled with trash. And the community came out and they cleaned it up. And now there's 3,200 acres of preserved acres for us to play on and hike on. But you have your own nature in your own backyard. You don't have to come to Mud Lake. You can do this in your own backyard. And so we're gonna go looking around and find some nature. And I would like for you to do the same thing. Then maybe we can do some sharing later, okay? So I'll see you on the trail. It is just a beautiful day today on this trail. I'm going to stop pretty soon and I'm going to use my binoculars. Maybe I'll use my deer ears and listen closely to nature. Let's listen right now. breezy out here and it's just a beautiful beautiful day 
I hear a raven. We're gonna walk further down the trail. I'm gonna look for that spot where I saw the two chicory gray squirrels playing. So on my walk, I have been using my deer ears to really listen to the sounds. And I've been using my owl eyes to really notice the animals and how busy they are. And I think I have spotted the juncos. Did you see them out there? The little junco birds, J-U-N-C-O. And they have a rust patch on their back and they make their nests down low in the bushes and trees. And I hear my friend the chicory off in the distance. And the, and the wind breeze is blowing and the birds are flying and nature is busy and we are nature. We are nature. So we're busy too. We have to make our home. We have to find our food. We have to communicate and talk to each other. We have to take care of each other. And we have to take care of nature because we depend on nature every day. And it's so important to be kind and to appreciate nature. Alright, so we've made it over to Mud Lake, which is looking mighty fine today. And we're going to try to look closer so that we can uh, see if we can use our own. you can see. Look at those clouds. And that's a Rapaho Glacier. This is a beautiful place. But you know, this may not be your backyard, but everyone has a backyard, which means a sidewalk, a tree. The birds are there. And you should use your owl eyes and your raccoon touch and your coyote nose and use all your senses to notice the beauty of nature because it's everywhere and we are nature we are nature so we live just like the wild animals we have to try and survive ourselves and that's what we do every day. And it may seem easy normally to find food. Imagine what these animals have to do. They have to build their own home. They have to find their own food. They have to make sure that their winter coat is thick enough to handle winter. Or maybe they know to fly away and find a warmer place. We have to take care of nature, because we are nature. And when we take care of nature, we take care of ourselves. Well, I started my journal. I just drew a little map, and I, I put some things on the map. And like the juncos, and the willows, and the peak, and the lodge poles, and the, and the bulrush. And maybe I'll see some more things on my way back around. It's really nice just to sit quietly and maybe just sit here for 
five or ten minutes with your mom and your dad or someone else. It's really nice just to have a little quiet time. Nothing else. All right, so we are on the end of our walk today. And I did hear those squirrels, but I didn't see them. They are sneaky. So stay tuned for another wild bear nature video coming to you. Thank you for joining me today. I thoroughly enjoyed our visit. Oh, I hear them. You hear them? And remember, once a wild bear, always a wild bear. So stay tuned. There's going to be a little video clip after this of a little bird nest that a bunch of kids and I found this summer. Enjoy. We are nature. I found a bird's nest. Oh, it just... It's, it's actually, I think it's a chickadee. Aww. Yeah. I want to see there are babies. I bet there are babies in there. I bet there are. Let me go see if I can. Good find, bud. So, Guys, come see this. Yeah, we can be quiet. We can see it. Let's remember where this is. Because wow. next week is bird week. birds and the dragonflies reach like a tree way up to the sky track sand scat salamander too the earth is good and good for you wild bear nature see the forest through the trees i love the wild and the wild in me wild bear Wow, baby.